So this unit here that we're going to use is 9000, 9000 SXT, but we can use this same programming guide for a 5600 SXT, 2510, really virtually any flex valve that uses the SXT controller. What we'll do is you navigate the clock to 12.01 p.m. You've got to have it read 12.01 p.m. So in this case, we're just going to press and hold the down arrow and back it up. Get to 12.01 p.m. Why do you need it there? Hit the far left key one time. To access master programming, you've got to have it at 12.01 p.m. When 12.01 p.m. comes back around on the screen, you'll press and hold your up and your down keys simultaneously and it'll give you your first screen DF means downflow and we want gallons to make any changes you'll use the up and down arrow extra cycle button to advance second screen is valve type stands for downflow one backwash it's what we want far left key control type now this is set for flow immediate on a single tank unit, we would select flow delayed. Advance to the next screen. Again, this is a twin alternating unit, so NT, number of tanks, two, single tank unit, obviously you'd want one. Far left key to advance. TS, telling us take and service. In this case, it's tank two. Uh, on single tank units that use the SXT control, this is irrelevant. Far left key to advance, C for capacity. This is relative to how much resin is inside the tank. In this case, we're going to set it for 63. Far left key to advance. Hardness. At this site, we've got it set for 32 grains. Um, your site will most likely be different. Far left key to advance. RS stands for reserve selection, and we want to do a safety factor here. Uh, when, when the valve comes, you bring it online, it will display RC for reserve capacity. That's a fixed reserve capacity. We're going to hit the down arrow and change it to safety factor. I like to use this for both twin tank and single tank units. Far left key to advance. In this case, we're going to save 15% of our capacity. 15% is pretty good for folks that, for households that have between one and three people in the home. Above that, depending on your usage, this can be tailored, uh, but depending on your usage, you may want to go 25%. Far left key to advance. DO stands for day override. On this one, we've got it set for 14 days every two weeks. Simply means the unit will regenerate as needed based on usage or every two weeks, whichever comes first. Far left key to advance. RT stands for regen time. We've got it set for 2 a.m., although with a twin alternating unit, although we do have a program for 2 a.m., it'll regenerate when it needs. Far left key, backwash, we want to set for 10 minutes. Brine draw, 60 minutes. Rapid rinse, 10 minutes brine fill is 16 minutes in this case a single tank unit or a twin alternating unit depending on the tank size will dictate what your fill time is far left key this is flow meter type in this case we're using a one inch paddle uh, in most cases with a 5600 SXT or a 2510 SXT you're going to use T 0 0.7. Hey Charlie, Michael the Persian with Z is fine as you. Far left key to advance, and we're back to the service screen. So now we're going to bring the software online. We've got it programmed. First off, I guess we should go ahead and reset the current time of day. It's 11.06 here. Now, we're going to set this unit into a manual regeneration. It's pretty simple. You just press and hold the far left key to initiate a manual regeneration. Uh, 
but this will take some time because it's, it's, it's got a swap. All right, so we've got the unit set it into a manual regeneration. It's settled into the backwash cycle. You can hear the, the drain, the unit's purging a lot of air. Now in this case, again, it's a flood alternating unit, so we're only doing one tank right now. We'll need to repeat this process a second time. But we'll allow the unit to count down through its 10 minute backwash cycle. Once the backwash cycle concludes, the unit will go to step number two, which is drawing draw, in which case we'll skip over the draw portion, we don't need to stand here for an hour and walk it. It will settle into step three, which is rapid rinse, but we'll follow back up after this time is gone, and we'll cover that here in a moment. Backwash cycle is nearing an end here, 30 seconds left. For the purpose of the video here, we're going to go ahead and advance it. Anytime you've got the cloth displayed on the screen, of the cycle you're in, if you hit the far left key one time, you can advance to the next step. So here in a moment, you'll see it settle in the brine draw, which will be set for 60 minutes. As I mentioned previously, we're going to skip over that and go to rapid rinse. Then we'll continue on with the 10 minute rapid rinse cycle. Now that our rapid rinse is done, we're going to hit the far left key one time. It's going to advance to the brine fill cycle. And now we'll just leave it alone. This will set the pre-programmed time for brine fill, the amount of water in the brine tank. It'll set it exactly where we want it to be. So at this point, the fire up the this unit's over. Um, or, or rather, if you had a single tank, it would be over. Since this is a twin alternating, we would then want to go and backwash and rinse the second tank. But you wouldn't need to go through brine draw, and you wouldn't need to go through brine fill since we're doing it here. All right, so just to sum up what we've done here, we've got the software installed. We fired it up, programmed it. What you can expect from here on, the cold water will be soft immediately. If you've got a traditional tank style water heater, once you flush out what's in that tank, it'll fill back up with soft water. If you've got tankless water heaters like we've got here at this house, your, your hot water will be soft immediately. Moving forward, I'll show you here. We've already filled the salt tank with salt. Now you won't necessarily see a water level in the salt tank, you certainly won't in this case with this much salt. The water level will vary based on the size of the unit. But moving forward, when you lift the lid and you look in and you can see water, a water level over the salt level, it's a pretty good indicator that it's time to go ahead and add some more salt. If you're in a one or two person household and your water usage is relatively low, you really don't want to fill this salt tank up completely full, just try and when you, when you do fill, your target would be over the water level. But in all cases, we want to let the unit cycle through and use all of the salt, or the majority of the salt in the salt tank before you would fill it up. What you want to avoid doing is opening the lid and constantly topping off the salt tank, trying to keep it full. So let it cycle through the salt, and fill it up. Cycle through the salt, fill it up. And you'll just follow that through the remainder of, of the unit's life.